Well, can you believe it? Another Powerfield Supercube 3 by Definitive Technology, the leader in high-performance loudspeakers. Baltimore, Maryland. Anyhow, this one was shipped in to me. And so, remember the last Supercube 3 that we had? Had bad pots. Let's check those pots first before we do absolutely anything else. So I know there's a lot of reflection on the board right now. Let's go ahead and turn every pot down all the way and so they're all down so we should have continuity between this pad and this pad I'll see what we get right here and I see 30 million ohms no that's not a 30 meg pot and I'm seeing six megs nope not good at all next one 0 0.2 0 0.3 that's perfectly fine for all the way down Point two again. This last one. Yeah, <laughs> infinite. So let's go and check across the pots. And yeah, am I making contact? Let's go ahead and check here. Yeah, I got good contact. Open. And I see 100K on that one. And 64K on that one. 2.8 meg, nope, not good. And 12 meg on that one, no, not good whatsoever. Let's go ahead and turn them up all the way. Now we should see basically a dead short between these two leads. And I do on that one, but I bet if I turn this down all the way, it's probably shorted internally on the board. And yes, I do. So do we see anything here now? Nope, open. We should get a short here. And I do get 57K and 38K. That pot might actually be okay. Put it in the middle and see what we get. I want to know if this is shorted. Yeah, it's shorted on the board internally. So up all the way, I should get a short or a couple of ohms. And I see 21 megs and 41 megs. Nope, not good whatsoever. These pots are absolutely toast in this thing. Well, the good news is I think I ordered spare pots on the last Supercube 3 that I repaired. And I think it was these. I got a 1K audio mono pot. I've got some 5K stereo audio taper pots. And I have some 20K linear, that's a B taper stereo pots. So I think I'm just going to try to power this thing up and make sure everything on the main board is good first before I go ahead and slap in all of these new pots. So just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and test a 1K. And this is the audio taper pot. And it's turned all the way down right now. So I should have continuity on these two pins right here. So we'll test that resistance real quick. I have 5 ohms, that's perfectly fine. It's a 1K pot. I should get about 1K from the outside leads, and I get 1.039K. It should be about the same here, 1.044. Now, if I turn this pot all the way in this direction, basically, it should reverse. I should get just a few ohms here, and I get 1 ohm, and I should get about 1K here, and I do. Perfectly fine. Same thing on the audio 5K pot. I should read 5K end to end. 5.2 and 5.3. This should be essentially a short 1.3 and 1.3, 1.2. Turn it the other way. Now I should get zero ohms effectively here. And 1.3, perfectly fine. And 1.2 there. Now I should get 5K here and 5K there. 
perfectly fine. Lastly, we have the linear taper, the B taper, 20K pot. So turn this thing down all the way. Once again, I should get zero ohms on these two pins. And I get one ohm perfectly fine. And I should get the full 20K there, zero there, and 20K here. And I should get 20K on the end leads. And I do all the way up. Once again, I should get a short between the center pin and the right pin now. If I can get my leads to stay on it. And it, it did turn slightly. One ohm, one ohm. I should get about 20K here. 19.9, perfectly fine, and 20K there. So, first off, this thing's gonna need a refill of pots. Okay, well I do have the unit connected right here, and I'm gonna switch on the power and we'll see what happens. I do have it going into a dummy load. Anyway, drew a little bit of current, but nothing too bad. Let's flip this thing over and see if we get a power LED. Okay, here we go, once again, power on. And no LED whatsoever. Let's go ahead and supply an audio signal into this thing and see what happens. Okay, here we go, audio is connected. Let's hit play. I do get an automatic power light, it didn't come on, but I have absolutely no audio coming out of this unit. It is drawing slightly more power than it was, probably about 15 watts right now, but I get no audio output. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach some fixed value resistors to these pots and see if that is the problem before I go any further. Okay, so I do have a fixed value 1K resistor and that is across the variable phase alignment pot. And I have two fixed value 10K resistors across the variable low pass crossover pot. And then from the last Supercube 3 repair, I do have this 5K pot and it's in the center position right now. And it's attached across the subwoofer level pot. So let's go ahead and power this thing on and see what happens. I'll feed it some audio and I've got absolutely nothing. Okay, we'll take that again. It helps if I actually connect the plugs from my MP3 player into the unit. So power on. I've got a little bit of audio going into it at a low level. And I've still got nothing. Interesting. Well, we'll crank it up, see what happens. It is not recognizing the input whatsoever. And there it recognized something, it shut down. Oh yeah, it's working now. Just took a minute to power up. So I've got this on my four amp scale and it is absolutely pegging it. Yeah, going into distortion. Well, I think it needs a set of pots. You might be able to see the lights actually dimming with the base. This thing has got some power to it. Oh my goodness. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and give the customer an estimate and see if he wants to go ahead and replace these three pots. I think that's gonna repair this thing. So anyhow, stay tuned. There might be a part two. I certainly hope you enjoyed the diagnosis portion of this Powerfield Supercube 3 subwoofer by Definitive Technology. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and I really would appreciate it. Thank you very much.
You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. If you do try to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please be aware it might be weeks or even months before I get back to you. I rarely check these messages. If you want to contact me, please use the Gmail account only. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Hopefully, the customer approves this estimate, and there will be a part two. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye. a little bonus footage just to see how long it takes this thing to power up with audio going into it so I do have audio going into it right now I'm gonna power this thing on and start the stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes to actually power up Okay, 35 seconds. So I'm going to pause the audio. I'm going to reset the stopwatch. Power this thing down. Power it back up with the stopwatch. And we'll wait about 40 seconds and then apply audio and see if it powers up immediately. Okay, there's 35 seconds. That should be where it actually starts. So let's go ahead and give it some audio now. It's been over 40 seconds and it starts immediately. Absolutely perfect. So these things have a 35 second time delay before you can power it on. So if I just power it down, reset the stopwatch, power it back on. And when I start the stopwatch, it's gonna be 35 seconds before this thing will actually power on. Well, about 34 seconds. So it must be discharging a capacitor and waiting for it to charge back up. But anyhow, if you have one of these things and you're very impatient, gotta wait at least 35 seconds. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.